question three. A uniform semicircular arc, ACB is freely pivoted at A. Very similar to the arc that Noah used. Uh, the arc has mass 0.3 kilograms and is held in equilibrium. That was a joke. Um, by <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Right, by a force of magnitude PN applied at B. The line of action of this force lies in the same plane as the arc and is perpendicular to AB. Delta AB is length of 4. Look, diameter. Just thought I'd stress that. Um, and makes an angle of theta with the downward vertical. See that? Part 1. Given that, actually, theta is 0, find the magnitude of the force acting on the arc at A. Bearing in mind that this, this kind of throwaway line that just appears has quite radically changed what's going on with our question. I think we need a new diagram. So we're going to draw our arc. <laughs> Not bad, Dave. There's A. There's B. Here is P newtons, our force there. Um, here is the, this, this line, which is the, uh, the diameter. And uh, we need to consider what's going on here. What did we have to find? The force acting on the arc at A. Right. So the force acting on the arc at A, well, this is what we do with, with connected particles, with you know things that hinges and all that kind of stuff. We think that the force at A, let's break it down into its perpendicular components. Let's think of it as being, well, looking at this, that there would be a weight of this, wouldn't the pushing downwards. So I think we'll have a force Y that's vertically upwards at the hinge. This force P is pushing in this direction, so I think we also need an X force there. They are perpendicular. They are the perpendicular components of the force at A. We're going to find out both of those, and find the resultant of those, and that's the force that we want. Does that make sense? So let's, let's think, we've got something missing from this, I just mentioned it. There would be, um, there'd be a weight of this, wouldn't there? The arc has mass 0.3 kilograms, so we need to do that as well. We go to our formula booklet, I'm looking around to see if I can spot one, but I can't see one, we've we got one handy. Good work. So in our formula booklet, great, great. we're going to turn to the relevant page, which is page 6. We're going to look at centres of mass. We're going to look at the bit, there's no rude drums in this, is it? we'll look at the bit where it says a circular arc, radius r, angle at the centre, 2 alpha, it is r sine alpha from centre. That's the one we want, isn't it? So, um, the centre of mass, bear in mind, um, we were told that this length was 4, so what's the radius? Two. R equals two. Okay. So just based on that thing there, it says it is R sine alpha over alpha from the centre. The angle at the centre is two alpha. What's the angle at the centre of our semicircle? Careful how you answer this. Pi. I like the way you didn't have the confidence to say that out loud, but you went for it. Um, the angle of the centre is pi, isn't it? We've got to work in radians. <coughs> Bless you. Um, so we're dealing with pi radians here. So alpha is pi by 2. So when we're finding out where the centre is, we want to do um, 2 sine pi by 2 over pi by 2 which gives us 4 over pi. Okay, so that's, that's the distance from the centre of the circle. So, here we have a distance of 4 over pi that leads us to that point there. And acting at that point, we have the weight, which is 0.3 g. Okay, so that's set that a little bit up. Right, now, we're supposed to be finding the magnitude of the force acting on the arc at A. Um, we don't know what this force P is, so we've got to somehow 
can we not include this force P in what we're doing? So, we're going to take the bones. I mean, that would be the sensible thing to do at this point. Um, we've got two things we can look at. If we resolve vertically to start with, we don't need to worry about P because it's horizontal. So we've got that 0.3G equals Y. So straight away we get the value of Y. Um, I can't remember what that was. I didn't work it out, but I've not written it down. If we, if we now take moments about B, we don't need to worry about P either. And remember how the moments work. What was, what was that? We'll leave it as 0.3G, it's fine. Uh, when we take moments about B, it is the magnitude of the force times the, the perpendicular distance of its line of action. So that force there, its line of action, perpendicular distance, is 4 away from B. Because that's what that distance is. So we want to put in 4 times x. There, that would take us in that direction. This force is trying to turn it around the other way, isn't it? And so that the horizontal distance, the perpendicular distance of its line of action, is 4 over pi times 0.3g. So that is 4 over pi times 0.3g. So we get x, I did actually just work this out in the calculator, x comes out as being 0.9358. That's obviously a just to follow this on basis. We've got x and y. We wanted to find the magnitude of the force at the, at the thing. So what we do now is that we do the, the resultant force would be the square root of x squared plus y squared, isn't it? And if we do that, 0.3g squared plus 0.9358 squared square rooted, we get 3.09 newtons. That's how I would have done that question. Um, part two. Well, now it's changed again, hasn't it? Now we've gone back to the diagram that we started with, where theta does have a, a value now. Theta is 30 degrees. So let's see if we can draw that. Let's have another new diagram here. Um, although I'm not sure how much we need a new diagram, but there we go. There's, there's my... Circle, this is now my semicircle. This is 30 degrees here. Here is A, here's B, that is P. Uh, remember, we've now got this distance here, that's 4 over pi. Okay. And this time we want to find, given instead that theta is 30, find the value of P. Well, well we saw, didn't we, that. Uh, the great advantage about taking moments is we eliminate all the forces that we're taking moments about. So we'd still have, we'd have new horizontal and vertical components of the force A, but actually I, I'm not, I don't want them. I don't want to be interested in what's happening with those forces. I just want that force. I've got my naught point, what was it, 0.3g acting down there. And if I'm going to take moments, well, that bit's easy enough, isn't it? Because that's 4, and there's the p-force. So my moment about a, that one, that's just a distance 4. I need the distance of this line from this line. I need to know what that distance is across there. OK? So let's think about what we can do with some triangles in there. If I imagine... that triangle there, I can find out that distance. Um, actually, I'll draw this triangle again. So that, you see that green triangle I've just drawn is there? I've got that distance. So that's the centre of my circle. There's then another little triangle. Can you see this little triangle in here? There's the other little triangle I've got. Because that's 90 degrees, that's also 30 degrees. And that's 30 degrees. That distance there, the hypotenuse of the bigger triangle is 2. If I look at that distance down there, the hypotenuse is 4 over pi. We found that out earlier. So if I think about these two distances, because all together they add up to the horizontal distance of the line of action, the, the perpendicular distance of the line of action. So um, A, A, 
That's the opposite in that triangle. There's my right angle. That's the hypotenuse. So A is 2 sine 30. So the distance A is actually 1. If we look at this triangle here, B, well this is now the adjacent in that little right angle triangle. So B is 4 over pi cos 30 degrees. Okay? I know I've, I've actually mixed up using degrees and radians in this question in terms of what I'm doing on the calculator, so you've got to be a little bit alert to that. But what we've now got is that if we take moments about A, then I've got this force here, which is 0.3g, times that distance, which is 1 plus 4 over pi cos 30, is equal to 4 times p. Not in the other direction. And, uh, and so, just give me two minutes. <laughs> um, so if we rearrange this, we get p is 1.55 newtons, the three different figures, and there we go. Um, okay, good, and that's maths. <laughs>